All right, so next we're going to take on the tank draining problem. Um, and so our tank drain problem originates from a mass balance. Okay, and um, what we want to solve for is you know, we have a tank filled with fluid at some time equals zero, a valve is opened up at the bottom. And what we want to be able to uh, measure is the height or calculate the height of the fluid as a function of time. Uh, so you want to solve for h as a function of t. And so we have a mass balance, uh, we put in all sorts of good expressions, and we get to this uh, equation, 9.19, okay, uh, cross-sectional area, A times dh dt, um, so that's the change in volume. Uh, but since we want to be able to calculate the height as a function of time, uh, we need to uh, have an expression for the rate of change of height with respect to time, dh dt, so we need to get dh dt all alone on the left, and so that's what we've done uh, here. Okay, So this is our first order differential equation. Uh, in this case it's nonlinear, h is raised to the power of one half, uh, but it's a first order differential equation, dh dt. Uh, dh dt corresponds to a function that tells us the rate of change of h with respect to time, uh, rate function. Um, so this is just a grouping of constants, um, and so we just call this negative k, um, and you know, later on in the problem we're told to use uh, value of k is equal to uh, 0 0.4 and then this is h um, at time equals 0 h is equal to h naught some initial height um, so we can just play with that I suppose and for this particular problem um, there is an analytic solution and so we're given the analytic solution uh, to plot if you wanted to uh, for comparison Okay, excellent. Yep, so this grouping of constants we're told uh, is k, um, and later on it tells us that k is equal to uh, 0 0.4. Okay, uh, so let's go over to MATLAB and let's, let's solve it. Okay. So if I want to solve this numerically, okay, the first thing you need to do is create a rate function, a rate function for the rate of change of h with respect to time. So uh, the function res is equal to, uh, let's call it a tank drain rate, and I'll have an input of t and h. Okay. So ODE45 requires a rate function, um, and then our restrictions on a rate function is it can have just a single output variable, and it has to have two input variables. It must have two input variables. Okay. Uh, so first comes t and then second comes the value of your function at uh, that time t. Okay, um, so any constants, um, you know, we should define within the function, um, or if you want to make it general, you need to pass those via an anonymous function so that when you use ODE45, you have a rate function with just two inputs. So let's here have k is equal to 0 0.4. And then our um, rate is res is negative k uh, times um, square root of h. Cool. So save it as tank drain rate. Then to solve, okay, if I store the output to vectors, t comma h is equal to ODE45 at um, tank drain rate, so function handles my rate function. Uh, time I want to integrate over, um, let's say 0 to 60, and we can you know, see what that looks like in a second. And then an initial condition, so we need a value of h at time equals 0. Um, so let's just start with say 20 meters. Okay, so I get a vector for t and h. Uh, actually this one has a lot of data points compared to free fall. So they're both column vectors with 7,453 rows uh, in one column. So I go ahead and plot t versus h. I'm going to say plot those with black circles. Okay. Oh. I get an error message. Okay. So the error message I get is warning imaginary parts of complex x and, and or y arguments ignored. So the issue I appear to be having uh, is we started at 20 meters. We said integrate out to 60 seconds. That looks way past the time at which the tank is empty, and so it's causing some uh, numerical issues. So maybe uh, let's stop integrating here about 25 seconds. Okay, so let's rerun this. 
from 0 to 25 seconds. And then let's plot again. Okay. Uh, same thing. Okay. Let's shrink it up. Well, if I look at um, H, yeah, see, so towards the end of H, I'm just going way past 0. That's causing issues, right? And the issue has to be within my differential equation, I have square root of H. So if that number is slightly negative, it's going to cause an imaginary. Okay, so let's go 0 to 20 seconds. Okay. Uh, now if I plot that. Okay. Uh, it doesn't complain, and it gets the value that looks like it's, it's pretty close to 0. Okay. Um, you know, and as far as we're concerned for now, that's it. That's our solution. Um, you know, later on, we'll see um, how we can turn this more into, you know, a solution that looks more like a traditional analytic function. Um, but then additionally, you know, we have this issue here where, you know, one of the issues with the problem is ultimately I'd want to um, solve over the time range for which, you know, time equals zero to the time it takes for my tank to be empty. The issue is I don't know what that time is. Uh, initially, all right, so it's hard to tell MATLAB to integrate to that time when I don't know what that time is. Um, so later on we'll see some ways uh, that we can do that as well uh, via both F0 um, and also um, using what's called ODE events and tweaking uh, the options used by ODE45. Okay, um, but if you want an example of comparing the analytic solution, uh, have a look at example 9.1 uh, where we did that there.